dollars for my car, for my bike, for everything. Just a few more dollars. Dollars. Just got, yep, just got a, uh, a gift in the mail. Now this is supposed to be um, a fork, a clutch fork, and it's um, 18 millimeters on this end and 20 on this one. I accidentally bought two. So what I've got to do, I'll show you. I've got to get a, um, a vernier caliper or a micrometer and check that size because the bush, which is still a quality bush, um, in the transmission, the, the gearbox housing, there's a bush in there and that slides in there. I wanted a H7 fit. I wanted a slide fit. And then afterwards, once it slides in and you, you like the tight fit, we'll grease it. We'll grease it because there's no other lubrication. I think in those bushes, in the Volkswagen ones, they have graphite pieces in the bush. And that's what lubricates it. So, two ways to do it. Great. <laughs> Just had my lunch and uh, feeling good. It was a nice one. So... Back in G2, in the shed here, and here we go. There's the transmission. Now, there's a bit I've learnt about this, is uh, this car is actually a 1300. Now, I do have a manual from Haynes, and it says 1500 and 1300. Well, the 1500 is from 19, late 60s. The 1300, they, they brought it out, I don't know why, emissions, why it's smaller engine, whatever. Um, and of course, 44 horsepower. But this is the transmission, this is the gearbox to that. And of course, I'm upgrading all the parts. And in here is the clutch fork. See that? Now, I've fitted that one, um, hand fitted it to the bearing that was in here. I'll pull it out. I'll pull it out, it's just there. And as you can see, as you can see, this surface here. I've, uh, I've used sandpaper and I've, I've brought that down slowly um, four, I brought it four thousandths of an inch down which is 0.1 and I've done that slowly, I've flattened it off, it wasn't totally flat and now it, it fits in size for size so it's a H7 fit and in here, I don't know if you can see but uh, So here we have inside the gearbox the fork bush. Now this bush here, it looks like original one, a German, and it see it has these little blocks inside the bush. Well, in that bush, that is graphite. Now graphite they use in engineering and that as a lubricant. If you if you don't have the possibility of having grease uh, or anything to put in there. They put graphite in the bronze bush, and that acts as a lubricant. All right, now, here we go. So this fork, this fork is to suit a 73 Beetle. Mine was built July 1972, and I think in that month, that's when they changed, they upgraded it. 1300, 1302, 1303, all had the 20 mil, clutch fork. This is 18, but that's 20 mil. Now, I, I have another one. So, I accidentally bought two, but the, this one that I first bought is the wrong one. Now, this, it said on the, on the package, this is for 1971, and 1972, 1300. But this is 16 millimeters, that is 18, and it's wrong. So I can't have that, and plus this one here's a bit rough. I don't know where they make these. On one of the packets it said Brazil, right? It may be good enough, but uh, that fork there is bent, and it's only welded on one side. So I think the German ones are welded on both sides and the forks are straight. So 
that's a that's not even a spare one that's the wrong one the spring is wrong the spring comes up on here but that spring's got to be shorter in there so I don't know if I cut it use that one but this is the good fork and even this is bent see it's leaning over that way see so I'll just straighten those and get it right in the middle and I might even just put a bit of weld there and a little bit of weld there uh, that's just how I am Right, here we have the axle boots. Of course, this is a 1300 uh, from the July, July 1972. So everything's a little bit larger and slightly better. That's the 20 mil fork rod. But these axle boots, these are from MP. Um, they're neoprene. And what I've done here, see here, I've made two plates. Goes around there to around there. There's one underneath and there's one there. And that is to press inside the corner a bit more in there so it actually seals it properly I'll, I'll make sure I don't need to put any glue on these I'll make sure it seals by itself and it's longevity it's a good quality neoprene I went for the yellow to have a bit of contrast with my black on that and then I can see what's happening and I've already made the other side as well here yeah. as you can see I've made these little things things out of two and a half mil plate I drilled two holes at 12 millimeters apart and they're four mil holes and that will go on the other side just like this so I can uh, pr put a pressure in the corner that's what I want and even pressure along here I found in the past that's where it leaked from so that's a good remedy that one right these are the um, axle and uh, bearing ends and these are the caps that go inside it goes in there and we have the backing plate in there and I bought these kits right and the kit uh, there's a part number and these kits so one kit from MP one kit per axle end so you put two of the packers uh, that's a shim um, and two o-rings for in there and, uh, and one and one main seal I'll clean all this hub up and I'll, I'll paint it I've got to clean the rust off that one. I've cleaned the other end, but not this one. And then I can start putting the brakes on. And that's important uh, to get to the brakes psychologically and looking at it, right? It's getting in there. But one thing I have mentioned, I bought the, uh, I bought the um, sort of like bearing that goes on here and they sent me the wrong size. So they sent me, um, I've got this sent me this one and it's a longer spring and oh I can't read the writing it's uh, this one is 16 mil and uh, it's got some seals that goes in there but this is 18 mil so that's the wrong one but uh, we're getting there we'll get the right things and this will be good for another 50 years no problem at all 50 years of sunny motoring and can't wait can't wait come on I've been prepping all these, all ready for painting tomorrow, gloss black, all these parts. Um, oh, probably not tomorrow, I'm going out, probably Monday. But this is what I do for a good time, alright? This is hard work. Um, yeah, there's going to be a great end result. But you know what? For a good time, this is what I do. Just watch me. Follow me. I gather 
oh, at least 150 kilos. It's a tall thing. I'm rolling the grass flat, get all the juices out, like a turf, cricket turf pitch. Roll it down. This used to be this thing used to be an umbrella stand. It was on the patio out the back, but they must have used it. And later on, not putting this on either. Later on, they buried it in the back garden. I dug it up. I don't know how. I dropped it. It fell over. I got to hardly pick it up. I could pick up. 80 kilos come around the other side there's a hole for the umbrella and it's fully sick in here it's concreted in all the way that is full of concrete all right keep going mate And what, what you're doing, the reason why on a, I'm going to drive the car down here, down here, the white van hardly fits, I have to pull the mirrors in, the beetle will come up and down here no problem, so I'm just packing it all down, so I can drive up and down, all right come on we can do it. All right, the two big, the two big gearbox repairers in California. If one is uh, right gearboxes and the other one, uh, Ra Rancho or Rancho, they they rebuild 100 gearboxes per month. So they're doing about, I don't know if I added up about two. Is that three, three, three to four gearboxes a day, and uh, they modify it. They put large large side plates on it to hack the power because a lot of them are for bar jar cars um, buggies and all that sort of thing right and they i noticed watching on youtube that they use one piece boots axle boots now the factory uses one piece axle boot but when you're putting a new boot on your car you can't put one piece one piece boots on there unless you pull it all apart so if you're putting new boots on there and you buy a split boot, you don't have to pull anything apart. You take that one off, you put that one on. That's what the split is for, right? And they're notorious for leaking if you don't do them right. So hopefully we get it right. If, if they're a piece of rubbish and piece of junk, there's a YouTube on there by a Swedish guy, I, think, I believe. He puts one-piece boots on there and he shows you how to put the one-piece boot on. Now, of course... You have to pull your axle tubes out to do it. And then what they do is they have an expander and they expand. You don't, I cut this off to take it off. It's old and haggard, right? But what they do is they have those things that expand the whole lot and then, and then they expand it and pop it on and, and put it over there. They'll never leak. One piece boot will never leak. Okay.